So there's a big new update for Warhammer 40k build to be coming out this week. Let's talk through each faction in the game and what they most need out of the balanced data slate and points updates. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about the big gameplay updates that's just around the corner for Warhammer 40k. Last weekend, Games Workshop revealed the details out of their new mission pack for Pariah Nexus, and they announced that alongside that, there'd be really quite a big overhaul to Warhammer 40k in general, bringing forward the next big updates with all the points changes and balanced data slate and things. For this video, I thought we'd talk through each faction in the game, and maybe a few things that people might be hoping for for their changes whether it's certain lesser played units getting a bit better in some way or another, or perhaps a few of the armies at the absolute top of 40k's power spectrum getting a few well placed nerfs. The update does sound like it's going to be really quite a big one, the Pariah Nexus mission deck has already given us a good idea as to what to expect, there are some things just in the mission gameplay that will change things for various units and factions out there, perhaps the biggest changes are those to actions maybe where it looks like they're going to be quite a big focus, and more so than the Leviathan mission pack that we had, and it seems that anything that moves quite quickly and has at least objective control 1 on a cheap unit, it's generally going to be in quite a lot of demand, given that OC0 units won't be able to do those actions and things now. That's far from the only change with buffs to things like Battle Line, and a nerf to Big Guns Never Tire that might help out Armoured List a little, so the missions are certainly going to have people building armies in a different way to how they were before anyway. Otherwise though, they could absolutely turn 40k on its head, the balanced data slate gives Games Workshop the chance to make rules changes to the game. Sounds like some of that is definitely coming for the Adeptus Mechanicus this time round, given that they said their codex was a bit weak, and they wanted to try and get the army playing with a bit more excitement. But it's also certainly possible that they could change around with some core things of Warhammer 40k, say for example messing with Battleshock to make it a bit more impactful if they really wanted to. We'll have to see what else comes out from there. Otherwise, the points updates could always flip the best units from being some of the best to the worst, depending on how brave or drastic Games Workshop wants to go. I imagine that most things will get some nodges, but we'll certainly get the first Codex points for the Gene Stiller Cult and the Sister of Battle, plus the Leagues of Votan, Hernkin and Jaegers, which are all going to be good for their factions. And finally, to cap it all off, there's going to be a rules FAQ that might make a few rulings on some edge cases in Warhammer 40k rules. There are a bunch of things that tournaments wind up having to legislate one way or the other, and that could have a few more impacts on the game, though I'd imagine mostly kind of peripheral stuff. Overall, putting all that together, it's going to be a big deal. Should be a pretty exciting time for 40k army building and getting armies together. For this video though, I really wanted to focus on a faction balance in 40k, and what each army in the game might be kind of hoping for in terms of points or rules changes. I talked over the rough state of play in 40k right now in a recent video. Broadly speaking, the game's in really quite a good state compared with where it's been in the past at a lot of times, but there's definitely some factions that stand out as being neglected right now. Some factions that are breaking the mould, but kind of nice to see no one single army as just flat out 40k's best right now, which is kind of cool. And while there are plenty of armies that have got good internal balance, there are some that just really don't, and definitely need some points changes to get the lesser played things in their armies being played more. In any case, let's jump in, going through each one of the factions, a rough current power, and maybe some of the things that could be helpful, for better or worse, for the army. First up, let's start with the Imperium, and the boys in power armour for the Space Marines. They're a little bit underpowered right now, as per the tournament stats, with a win rate of around 44%. The Space Marine balance is kind of weird in 40k at the moment. They do have strong detachments and builds in their codex, it just tends to be that the Divergent chapters can run flatly better versions of those by adding a fun unique unit or two, and that weirdly depresses the Space Marine win rate due to the players who are trying to run their list optimally jumping to the Divergent chapters, even if they might not be changing loads. There were some changes last time round though, buffs to jump intercessors, hellblasters, the Vindicator, and a few others, and some nerfs to the Storm Raven and some Iron Storm enhancements, though the Iron Storm Spearhead still remains very strong. I still think that probably the thing that could help out Space Marines the most would be some sort of incentive to actually get you to play the Codex and not have the Divergent Chapters just run a flatly better version of Space Marines without any downsides. At the moment the only real draw to say playing Iron Hands or White Scars and things are their character data sheets, and even if they were absolutely godly it might be kind of hard to have any one character to be a huge draw to just playing the faction when you're weighing at the top against maybe say everything that the Blood Angels or the Black Templars have to offer. If they did want to do that, I feel like there's a fair few ways that they could go about it, maybe just something as simple as like a small buff to Oath of Moments, maybe adding reroll 1s to wounds 
for the more codex chapters. Or I guess you could just further undercost their characters to add more rewards to playing the codex Astartes. Not sure what the solution is or if they'll even bother to fix it. But beyond that, there's definitely a fair few units that could still use help on the point side of things. I'm not going to focus too much on flyers and fortifications in this video, seeing as it's clear that Games Workshop wants them kind of at minimal use in competitive play. But beyond things like those, units like Reavers, the Firestrike Turrets, the Invicta Tactical Warsuit, the Invader ATV, the Standard Dreadnought, maybe Devastators or the Desolation Squad are all kind of rarely played in competitive. You could definitely get away with quite a big swathe of points cuts and not really affect faction strength too much. For the Imperial Guard, they're where they've been for the whole edition in terms of win rates, stock at around about 45 to 46%-ish. Last update, they had that rather punitive nerf that absolutely squarely hit their most competitive build. Manticore's Medusa's Kazakin and Borgrin all going up, even if they did get some fairly nice points decreases for a bunch of other things. Rough Riders, lesser played Rosses like the Vanquisher and Scions all went down, and they're all looking like genuinely quite good units now. I feel like Guard are in a bit of an awkward spot, and they're certainly towards the lower end of the power spectrum, they're not quite standout weak that they're really going to attract all that much balanced attention as they have been for the rest of the edition, and maybe just seems unlikely that Games Workshop's going to do too much with them as a result. Most of their index really is very well balanced, the vast majority of their data sheets are usable in competitive, more so than is normal for them, and it might just be that we get a few more internal balance type things as a result. Maybe for individual data sheets, things like the Death Strike and the Valkyrie, despite being artillery and flyers, both of them operate in quite different ways to the extent where I don't think it'd be a problem for the game at all if they were both strong. And there's still perhaps a slight gripe that just about every competitive list out there starts with Lord Solar Leontus. It's a bit of an army warping model. It does seem like a list freedom building weakness to have just about every list start with him. I guess in an ideal world he might cost a bit more and then the rest of the army would have some other source of strength to compensate for that. But given he's quite so essential for the army right now, you might have to do something fairly drastic to the rest of the forces if you were going to pump up his points by a significant amount. For the Admech, they're certainly hoping for something big this time round. A 44% win rate, with the last update dropping points yet further on a bunch of slightly less good damage dealers. Genuinely, their internal balance is a bit better as a result, though I feel like sending them even more horde mode for their army wasn't going to win them all that many points with fans. They've said they're going to do some sort of fairly major changes to the faction, they've broadcasted that well ahead of time. I guess it will probably be messing around with something kind of core to them on the balanced data slate, maybe doing something to improve doctrine or imperatives, or they can maybe do something like give the entire army ballistic skill 3 plus or something. I think the main complaint with them is that the vast majority of their units just really aren't all that dangerous. They've got loads of options for fast-moving screening chaff in various forms. It'd be nice to have a few more units that are truly viable on the danger unit sort of front. I feel like quite a few people enjoyed their sort of big synergy and complexity type thing that they had going on in 8th and 9th edition. And did seem a bit of an about face for the army going into 10th. Regardless of exactly how they choose to buff them though, I'd ideally like to see them end up with them being lots more threatening on the table, and then cost quite a lot more points on the table as a result, so you don't have every Admech army costing in the region of $2,000 in optimised play. Next up for the Nuns with Guns, we've got the Adeptus Auroritus. Their tournament stats pre-codex were around 52%. And they've had the rules for their codex drop in the last week or so. Their codex really was quite a fun one with a lot of buffs to several data sheets. Things like Paragon Warsuits, Zephyrim, Repentia and Mortifiers all getting nice changes. And then the detachments seem very nice as well. The Bringers of Flame looks particularly easy to use with its fast moving damage dealers up close which meshes well with what they like to do. And literally all three of the others still feel like they do fun powerful things. They did get a few nerfs losing things like Crusaders and Death Cult Assassins. Plus the change to the Immolator I think will be a bit of a blow to Melter weapons, but broadly the direction was them getting better. As I said with the Codex review though, I feel like this is likely going to result in points rises for the army. They were already one of the game's stronger factions, and people had them performing well with quite a good internally balanced unit roster. Given both datasheet and detachment buffs in a fairly big way, I suspect that as a result Games Workshop will crank up the points cost on a bunch of units. I think if that does turn out to be the case though, it's probably not the worst thing in the world. As I'm sure the Admech players will probably tell you, it's, it's likely best to have units that are dynamic and impactful and attachment rules that are really quite exciting and different and have the units pay for the privilege as a result as opposed to having everything go more horde mode and lots of elite infantry not really feeling all that threatening on the table as was the case with Sisters early in 10th edition. It will be fun to see what shakes out as the good stuff for them though. 
For the custodies, their codex didn't really do them too many favours. Win rates are around about 45%, so on the lower end of the power spectrum there, and not really threatening for top tournament placements at all. Custodies being a bit of a raw power sort of army, that if they don't have enough to overcome a lot of foes, then they're going to have trouble against people who can play really well. The codex was a big disappointment to the custodies though. Fine with both Dark Angels and Abmech for being some of the worst received in the edition. They just got nerfs on all fronts. Detachments weaker than the index one. Data sheets that lost a bunch of fairly cool rules, even when it didn't really make sense to. Martial Qatar got a bit more limited. And they lost their protection against devastating wounds, which had been added back in a previous FAQ. I feel like that might be one thing that they could do in the balance data slate. If they wanted, they could just do an entire game change to say that anything that gives protection against mortal wounds also gives you protection against devastating wounds as well, as that seemed like it was the intention at the start of the edition. Failing that, they could just arrive to the custodian specific stratagems, or just give them a flat 5 plus save against devastating wounds maybe, if they didn't want to go the whole hog of the 4 plus. Though I guess failing that, they could just do points cuts if they wanted, though I feel like that wouldn't really be what custodian players would likely want to see. Even if they did do some sort of rules change, I feel like Virtus Praetors could really do with going down in cost still. They've basically just costed too much versus the rest of the index since 10th edition came out so far. Next up, the Knights of Titan are at the other end of the power spectrum, winning around about 55% of tournament games and one of the game's top 4 armies I'd argue now. The last balance update was a bit of a side grade for them, slight nerfs to Dread Knights that are still quite nice in general purpose, plus their librarians, they got some buffs to the power armoured troops, and for whatever reason, with the removal of some good competition in other nerfs, seems like the Grey Knights have broken through in terms of datasheet strength, plus their teleport shenanigans. At 55% win rate, they're not exactly dominant to the extent that Eldari were, or we had other armies earlier in the edition. I still feel like, as one of the top armies of the game though, they're likely to attract negative attention, though I really don't think they need anything too drastic. A couple of small points changes would probably be enough, I feel like Dread Knights, again, might be the things that get looked at. They do seem to be pretty much the tournament staple unit, with three of them, plus often a Grandmaster Dread Knight in just about every Grey Knights list, backing up their troops. If they wanted to push Grey Knights a bit more back in line with the rest, then a further small points increase might not be the worst, obviously making sure not to go too far, given that Dread Knights really do need to be good for Grey Knights, as they don't have anything else to deal with armour. Broadly speaking, though, for the rest of the index, most of their units are at least usable. Perhaps purgation squads and a couple of the lesser played characters could afford to go down a little bit, though internal balance wise I think they're doing okay. For the big and stompy Imperial Knights, they've got win rates of around about 50%, fairly well balanced, though as per normal with them, they tend to do better in more casual settings, and a bit less likely to top massive tournaments. Last update, they didn't get any points changes for themselves, but had a couple of peripheral Imperial Agents options like Inquisitorial Henchman and the Calidus Assassin nerfed, Maybe not the end of the world to find like 20 more points per list though for a bit of objective support. Overall their win rate shows they're really quite well balanced against the other factions. It's kind of by their nature at the moment that they're going to be doing well at stat checking some more casual armies but not doing quite so good against the absolute top tier ones. So maybe Games Workshop could just do with focusing on internal balance for them. I feel like the ones to look at are probably most of the Titanic Knights, Barcanus Rex, who seems to be the most commonly picked one. He just has way more damage and threat for his points versus any of the rest of them. If they're not going to do anything too crazy with rules changes, probably just small decreases to most of the rest of the Titanic ones will be alright. Maybe the Valiant and the Preceptor standing out as needing more help than most there. Otherwise, I guess if they were feeling braver, they could try and revert the Bondsman ability nerf the one that meant that the Questorus' big buffs couldn't help themselves anymore. I feel like that's maybe a mechanic that is a little bit harder to balance than if it just affects the armagers, and it would likely mean that a bunch of the big knights would need the points changing once more, most of them going up to equate for massive power boost on their own data sheets. With them being in at least a relatively good spot right now though, I'm not sure if they're going to break the mould too much. Finally for the Imperium, let's round up the Divergent Space Marine chapters, Space Wolves, perhaps slightly surprisingly, jumped from being a kind of mid-tier army to being arguably the top faction in the game, despite getting no real points changes last time round. I guess some big nerfs to Custodes and Necrons helped stop keeping them down. Custodes did tend to function as a bit of a counter-melee army that made their Thunder Wolves a less good idea while they were everywhere. Given that they seem to have literally the best win rate in Warhammer 40k right now, again it's very likely they are going to attract some attention, Though again, I don't think they need anything massively crazy to bring them a bit more back in line. It is almost certainly going to fall on the Thunderwolf Cavalry. 
given that literally every single competitive Space Wolf tends to use them, often spammed in three units of six of them in the Stormlands task force, there'd certainly still be a unit that would be very strong indeed if it went up to something like 95 points or 100 points per three, or Games Workshop could choose to increase the cost of the supporting characters, I think either of them would have a pretty similar effect. Otherwise though, it would be really nice to see the Champions of Rust detachment get some kind of boost, Games Workshop did that really successfully for the Blood Angels, a small rules boost that flipped Sons of Sanguineous from being rarely played to their preferred detachment, though the comparable change for the Space Wolves just didn't do enough. It gave them slightly more flexible access to Sagas, but didn't change anything for the detachment too meaningfully. I'm not 100% sure what the best way to try and write it would be. The Sagas do seem to be kind of by their very nature ties to certain actions that the enemy makes. Maybe you could try and just cap it so that if you're having no luck then you get some sort of boost. Maybe doing something like auto-achieving a Saga at the end of round 2 or something if you haven't got one already. Just to make sure that the Space Wolf player doesn't spend the entire game without any of their Saga buffs. Next up for the Blood Angels themselves, they're pretty well balanced right now I think. Tournament win rates of 50%, which was actually a little bit better than I was expecting, given that they took some nerfs last time round. Lots of their best things went up, with the Death Company, La Parties, and Sanguinary Priests. The lesser played things did get a bunch of help, Sanguinary Guard, Jump Intercessors, and a few of the characters and Dreadnoughts and things all had some good news. As mentioned, it's really cool to see them actually using Sons of Sanguinius, and wanting to run plenty of Jump Troops, as they should be, as per the law. On the whole, I certainly don't think they need any particularly massive changes, Maybe could just continue to nose down the points on the units that don't regularly see competitive play until the point where they are seeing people experiment with them. Maybe Dante, Mephiston and Sanguinary Garb once more could all use some small points cuts, even if it was something kind of tiny to the tune of 5 or 10 points or so. The Dark Angels really don't have it so good though. Their codex was one of the less favoured ones of 10th to put it lightly. Their overall tournament win rates are around about 42%, and even that is being yanked up by Iron Storm Spearhead, which weirdly enough has worked out as the best way to play them between Azrael farming command points and a land speed of Dark Shroud giving you some nice cover to your vehicles, often a Storm Raven dropping a Dreadnought. Even this build was nerfed a bit in the last update given the Storm Raven and the Iron Storm enhancement nerfs. They've still won some tournaments with it since though. They did also get some points cuts to Deathwing Knights, Inner Circle Companions and Lionel Johnson and they're all at the point where they're kind of usable casually but don't really seem to break through into competitive and given their kind of dismal win rate it still feels like another small cut is in order to basically the majority of the codex that isn't Azrael and the Dark Shroud even if the drop wasn't stand out huge. If anything Azrael's under costage ridiculously ought to include and probably needs to go up Though I think they need to be careful about doing that given that he is the one thing that Dark Angels have at the moment. So you'd absolutely have to have other things get strong enough to compensate. I feel like the Codex attachments are also bad and not interesting enough to warrant balanced data slate help. It'd be really nice if they did something to help out a bit with basically any of them. The Unforgiven Task Force has basically had weird and underpowered rules ever since 10th came out. But I really don't know exactly what they could do to improve it, as it just seems very strange to have a detachment balanced around failing Battleshock tests, which isn't something that you tend to do all that much. In general, I feel like the Dark Angels are one of the armies that needs the most help in this balance update, both to their units and detachments if possible. Death Watcher, another one that are sort of in dire need of help. It was pretty weird to see them just completely passed over for any sort of update last time round, seeing as they're basically unplayed in the competitive game and the numbers that they seem to achieve when they are don't seem to be particularly great. Besides the changes to actual Space Marine units, they didn't see any changes last time, even though I think you could argue that the vast majority of the kill teams that they have could afford to go down in points. I'd say their core detachment isn't actually awful, it does have some actual useful damage boosts and things, though it is a bit unhelpful having so many of their stratagems tied to bolt weapons, when at least the majority of the bolter things in Codex Space Marines don't really tend to be amazing as your mainline damage dealers. Hopefully they get something this time round, though this level of neglect has certainly led to some people speculating whether or not they're going to be rolled into some sort of Agents of the Imperium style codex. No idea at all on that front, but it doesn't seem entirely out of possibility. If they do want to help them out with points though, then it's generally going to be a pretty big points cut on just about everything. For the Black Templars, they've had quite a run at the very top of 40k, though seem to be a lot more mid-tier now. Last time round they had increases to the Primaris Sword Brethren, the Firstborn Crusader squads and putting their Melter vehicles to 10 points per Melter which I think was a good change. Overall I feel like Games Workshop have actually done quite a good job of getting Black Templars into a fairly nice spot now. 
Literally all their unique units are solid and usable, and their index attachment with Righteous Crusaders is really quite nice. I'd be kind of surprised if Games Workshop does anything too major with them as a result. Moving on to the Forces of Chaos next, and Chaos Space Marines are the most recent codex to have gone live. The Heretic Astartes seem to have been having a fairly good time of it, when rates around about 51%, there have only been a few weeks of data so far. The codex was quite a fun and well received one, multiple interesting detachments, even if it does look like the majority of people are trying to go for Renegade Raiders. And to be honest, this close to a codex launch, I'd be kind of surprised if they make any immediate points changes to them. Games Workshop generally like to have a good few weeks of feedback before they choose to actually address anything. That was very notable with Amec and Necrons, which didn't get any changes even six weeks after their books dropped. If they were feeling like making an effort, there's plenty of things that are pretty obviously overcosted. The Lord Discordant and the Helldrake maybe being big examples. I think since the Codex changes, the Master of Possession is kind of notably weak for the cost as well. Kind of a shame seeing as he's the model from the Combat Patrol. Maybe for more mainline units, I feel like Possessed could actually afford to drop a little bit more than they have, given the loss of devastating wounds. They're just not really very good in general purpose at taking out tough stuff anymore, and I can't imagine that many people choosing to go for them over Chosen or Legionaries. Talking of which, Legionaries do seem kind of auto-include great at the moment. Almost feels like they might have overcrashed in points a little bit, like they did with the Death Guard Plague Marines. If they did want to try and rebalance them a little bit versus the rest of the Codex, then I think they'd still be a great unit at 85 points or so. They do have a bit of a surprising amount of just overall threat, durability and objective control plus battle line, which will be a pretty massive advantage in some of the new missions. Death Guard were unchanged in the last balance update, and they seem to be remaining on their around about 50% kind of win rate. Broadly most of their units are in a good spot, most unique things are usable, and they're not weak overall. They are about to take a slightly indirect nerf with Nurglings, objective control zero, no longer being good to do secondaries anymore. And I guess that is the case for a few other Chaos factions. For internal balance, Typhus does still seem to be weirdly undercosted at 80 points. He's basically auto include at that sort of points cost, capable of blasting out massive amounts of mortal wounds and still having a very impressive melee stat line. And I still think that Blight Lord Terminators could use some help as they've needed for the entire edition. They've just been worse than the Death Shroud permanently. Otherwise, perhaps out of the others, the Mephitic Blight Hauler could use a bit of help out of the Demon Engines. Maybe just a very small points cut to make it a little bit more tempting versus the Bloat Drones and the Plague Burst Crawlers. And a few of the support characters could potentially use help. Maybe the Plague Surgeon could be one to look at. There's definitely a bunch of those that get taken in just about every army list, and some that get never played. For the World Eaters, power-wise, they're kind of similar to the Death Guard. Win rates are around about 49%. That's rising up the rankings a fair bit from then. Last time round they got cuts to Berserkers, Jackals, and a few other things like Morphines, Terminators, and Hellbrutes. Again, like the Death Guard, I said they're broadly in a very good spot. All their unique things are usable in-game in competitive lists, which is rather nice to see. And it doesn't look like they're either too strong against the rest of the field, nor too weak. As a result, probably unlikely to see anything too major. Perhaps for units that could use help might be the Terminators, though I sort of wonder if Games Workshop cares a bit less about them, versus the unique models like the Berserkers and the 8 Bound. Khan the Betrayer still feels like he's maybe paying a little bit too much for what he does. I still think he's usable, but lots of people seem to be passing him up, versus things like the Master of Executions with the Berserker Glaive. And if you are looking at auto-includes, Angron is literally in every list. Kind of depends on what Games Workshop wants to do with them there. It's certainly cool to see him really strong. It just depends on whether or not they want to try and balance him, so he's in some lists, but not all of them. As currently, I've not really seen any World Eaters armies not using him. Probably the main thing that they need, though, is the next half of their range releasing, and that's not going to come with this balance update, unfortunately. For the Thousand Suns, they're sitting pretty at the very top of Warhammer 40k right now. Win rates are around about 55%, and vying with things like the Space Wolves and the Grey Knights for the best win rates, and they're certainly bringing home a lot of tournament trophies too. The last update maybe did go surprisingly leniently on them for a really good army already. They had nerfs to a couple of enhancements, but then a bunch of points cuts to a lot of their more peripheral supporting units, maybe Cultist being the most relevant one that sees the most play. Scarab Occult Terminators still don't really seem to be cropping up in competitive lists at all, even despite a fairly reasonable points decrease. The new mission changes could be relevant to the Rubik Marines as well. Any sort of battle line buffs that might get played in that would help out Thousand Sons a lot, seeing as their usual play is a bunch of sorcerers backing up something like 25 to 30 Rubik Marines or so. 
Given that they seem to be one of the strongest armies in the game right now, it stands to reason that they're probably going to attract some kind of nerfs, though I'm not entirely sure what Games Workshop might go for. Thousand Sons army lists do seem to be a bit cookie cutter, though it's not like they've got loads of options to fall back on. If they were to make nerfs, then it might be good to try and make it so Rubik Marines vs Scarab Occult was a bit more of a choice as opposed to obviously one way or the other. I guess that logic would say an increase to Rubik Marines, though they are very expensive already it feels. Otherwise, like Angron for the World Eaters, Magnus is basically in every list. He's a linchpin to the army and a bit game warping in that it's going to be hard to give him a fair points cost where he's a take or leave sort of option, but he certainly seems to be in the realm at the moment where he is an absolute auto include, so again if you wanted to know Thousand Sons you could potentially put him up a little bit. Whatever they do though, I don't think it's sensible for them to go too heavy. I feel like they're paying quite a lot for their units already and some small changes could have some big impacts. Hopefully if they do decide to hand out some nerfs they can do so without ruining them. Next up we've got the Chaos Demons, again an army that seems to be at least fairly well balanced versus the field externally, a tournament win rate of around about 49%, last update Games Workshop didn't do any changes for them whatsoever, though they had had a pretty much rewrite of their entire points section in the January update before. As mentioned for the Death Guard, one nerf that's coming for them is Objective Control Zero Nurglings going to not be able to do secondaries anymore, and that'll be one downer on their objective game. At the moment their lists do tend to be very Greater Demon heavy, though exactly what sort of Greater Demon does vary really quite a lot from one army to the next. Most of them are pretty playable, though they're kind of necessary to deal with the enemy's big heavy threats. Beyond that there's a lot of units that just very rarely seem to appear in competitive lists, maybe some of the chariots and the cavalry besides the blood crushers and the Ren Master. Again some small waves of points cuts wouldn't be the worst there, maybe fiends or the plague drones could be good targets as well. Probably the standout auto include for the army that's getting taken the most is the Great Unclean one with the 4 plus feel no pain type enhancement. I think it wouldn't be too unreasonable for one of them to see a points increase, maybe just to make them a bit less standout overall versus all the rest of the greater demons that you can choose from. Finally for Chaos we have the Spiky Knights. They're winning around about 47% of tournament games, so again, kind of mid-tier really. As with the Imperials, they often tend to do better in more casual settings, or against more de-optimised lists, and be a trickier army to actually top grand tournaments and things with. Last points update, they had absolutely no changes, which was kind of annoying really, given that there's quite obvious things that you could do with them. And this time round, as with all the rest of the Chaos, the Nodlings are going to OC0. I feel like that's probably going to actually impact Chaos Knights more than anyone else, as they often tend to take quite a lot of the things to do their secondary game for them. Against the rest of the field, they might be a touch underpowered, but their external balance isn't awful. Internally within the Codex though, their internal balance does seem to be kind of awful. If you look at any one Chaos Knight list that's done sort of well in a tournament, there's a good chance that the vast majority of the data sheets are going to be Wardog Brigands and Wardog Carnivores. It's not uncommon to see a pretty maximal spam of both of those, leaving the list with a Wardog Stalker for the character keyword, and then backing up with Demons to score. It just felt like a really obvious move last time to decrease the cost on basically every single Titanic Knight once more, as it was clear that they still weren't being played versus the Wardogs. I'm not sure why Games Workshop didn't bother to do that last time round. I feel like buffing the big knights is probably more important than nerfing the war dogs further. I feel like both of them would be usable if you put them up by 5 points or so, though I guess that might risk hurting the chaos knights quite a bit on a power sort of level, particularly if they're losing all their nurgling scoring. In any case, it would be really quite nice to see if chaos knights could finally be able to pivot away from war dog spam being the best way to run them. Moving on to Xenos next, and we have the Eldari. They've fallen a fair bit from their perch at the top of 10th edition when they were winning 70% of games and now down to more like 47. The last points update they had bringing nerfs to Swooping Hawks, Shadow Spectres and D-Cannons and some points buffs to Guardians, Howling Banshees, Scorpions and Shining Spears. In overall power wise they're certainly far more mid, they're still putting in some okay tournament performances from time to time. And perhaps more than most armies, they're actually seeing some very different army builds getting place, usually involving a bunch of their fast movers like Warp Spiders, Swooping Hawks and the Autox Skyrunner, but beyond that there's really quite a lot of variation. With a new mission pack, Warp Spiders and Swooping Hawks with their movement shenanigans look like they're going to be absolutely massive for doing actions and things. Not sure if Games Workshop might see that as an excuse to increase the cost on those a bit more, particularly seeing as they're the most played units for the army anyway. So given that it looks like they're more towards the lower end of the 40k power spectrum than the upper end right now, they certainly need some good boost to counter that out if that did happen. I feel like Shining Spears definitely still have a lot of room for going down before they're going to be particularly great. 
Most of the Wraith units are kind of seldom plays now, no longer the big problem things that they were. Perhaps the Corsairs could afford to drop a bit too. Their internal army balance is definitely a lot better than many though. For their Dark Kin, the Drukari are in a fairly good place, around about 51% wins. There were no points changes in the last balance pass. They were kind of recovering from their very big update in January where they got lots of points changes and that fun new Sky Splinter detachment. Where they are at the moment, I think they're in a very good place really. The vast majority of their units are really usable in tournaments. The Sky Splinter is fun and it rewards their most notable style of play. Maybe out of any of their units, perhaps the Helions and maybe the Grotesques perhaps stand out as being perhaps some of the worst value for points. If they're not wanting to boost flyers like the Razor Wing, then maybe the Helions are the ones that are most likely to get a points decrease. Overall though, I'd be tempted to not do very much with them if I was Games Workshop. Next up we have the Tyranids, who haven't been doing so great in terms of win performance. Around about 44% now, it's been a slow and steady slide down for about 50%-ish when their codex first dropped. And it looks like the points cuts that they had last time round really haven't helped them. It was a lot of buffs to some kind of peripheral stuff that just didn't really get taken too much, so it didn't really add much raw strength. Maybe cheap lictors at 55 point loan operatives were one of the more impactful changes. Most of the rest took sort of bad units and made them more sort of mid. I feel like Tyranids are one of the other armies that are going to need some sort of major help in the balance update though. They're about to have their scoring kind of nukes given that every optimised list at the moment has a biovore for spawning spore mines. It means that you can just fire them out where you need them and then they auto complete a secondary objective. That's just not going to work anymore due to the OC0 changes. As a result maybe a very small points cut to pretty much most of the units in the army might be kind of reasonable. They're fairly weak with that scoring shenanigans thing and they're going to be weaker without it. I feel like they could do with a small points cut to basically all their mid-tier units, not just their weaker ones. And just pass over a few of the things that seem to be in kind of auto-include territory. Things like gargoyles, exocrines, perhaps the neurotyrants. Otherwise, if they wanted to do more fun and creative things, I guess they could add some sort of bolt-on balance data slate kind of rule. And I guess they could do something fun and creative with that if they wanted to. They might be a bit clunky trying to add something on that isn't really intended by the codex. In any case, they're definitely a faction that need help in the points changes and the balanced data slate, otherwise it's going to be bad news for them. The Gene Stealer Cult have just had their codex come out. Pre-update, they were doing kind of well. Tournament win rates are around about 52%, but the codex has been a very big power nerf to them. It just broadly contained far more nerfs than it did buffs. Lots of data sheets getting hit, such as Neophyte Seismic Cannons, Acolyte Demo Charges, or Aberrant Power Hammers. And while I still think that the Codex Detachments do have some fun stuff, they're not quite the same sort of huge raw strength as the Index one with its really nice stratagem shenanigans. Losing the return to reserves was kind of big, as was the battle line nerf to Colt Ambush. As a result of all those changes, I can't help but think it's almost certainly going to go hand in hand with really quite serious points decreases. Maybe particularly for Aberrants, given that they both got a lot weaker in defence and a lot weaker in attack. I feel like both the Neophyte hybrids and the Acolyte hybrids would both need to go down as well. Neither of those are anywhere near as threatening as they were pre-Codex. If Games Workshop does manage to balance them, then I'd guess that we're reverting back to slightly more Horde mode Gene Stealer Cult, and the army might have a bit of trouble punching up against some of the toughest stuff in the enemy army. They just don't have a massive amount of anti-tank type weapons that work really well now. Moving on, for the Space Dwarves, we've got the Leagues of Botan. They're again a kind of mid-tier faction with win rates around about 47%. The last balance pass didn't change anything too major for them, a small points decrease to Hearthkin Warriors and Uthar the Destined. This will be the update in which they find out the points cost for their Hernkin Jaegers. They're the unit with infiltrates that don't have really any sort of other crazy type rules. They get a reactive move and a missile launcher that's fairly fun against vehicles. But in general, they do strike me as a unit that's mainly just going to be taken for infiltrate and being a bit of a speed bump. Hopefully, they'll be given a points cost that's kind of in line with their abilities. The Orc Commandos, which feel at least somewhat similar, were 135. I feel like these guys would probably need to be a bit cheaper than that, though. Maybe something along the 100 to 110 point mark could be okay. I feel like infiltrate will actually be really valuable to the leagues of Votan, screening out for all their scout move things. Otherwise, currently, after a fair few balance updates, basically the entire index is very playable competitively. Maybe another small points cut wouldn't exactly hurt Uthar the Destined, and I guess if they really wanted to, either Hearthkin Warriors or Chthonian Berserks, I think, could also drop a bit more. Really, though, I think the main thing that they need is their Codex release and their next model wave. 
At the moment, they still feel like they're basically half an army, and it does seem likely that they're going to be getting some more fun stuff when their codex comes out. The Orcs have been stomping much of Warhammer 40k flat over the past few weeks since their codex drops. Along with Thousand Suns, Grey Knights and Space Wolves, they're one of the armies with the top win rates, so I feel like they're probably going to be front and centre in people's attentions. They've played about twice as much as the average Warhammer 40k army, and between good win rates and massive play rates, they're winning more events than any other faction. The main army that they're doing it with are the Bully Boys. Two turns worth of Mega Knobs with massive feel no pain and enormous melee damage, often backed up by knobs and boys led by war bosses. Get a bunch of trucks and sling them into battle, and then back them up with some Storm Boys and Gretchen. Green Tide is also doing very well, though maybe a few less people playing that with the time and effort to play plus the models to get together. And it looks like it could be seriously scary if it does go unadjusted and the battle line changes come in. Again, like the other armies at their tier, they're probably going to attract nerfs given that they're just doing quite so well. I feel like front and centre and the crosshairs are going to be the mega knobs, perhaps more so than anything in 40k, they just give loads of other armies problems. Getting a 4 plus feel no pain for 2 turns in bully boys just takes them from being pretty tanky to just ridiculously hard to kill for several factions, never mind the fact that each unit of them is pretty hitty and have got some good support. Otherwise if orcs are taking a few nerfs then other things that Games Workshop might look at are things like Trox, War Bosses, Gretchen and Storm Boys as they're fairly ubiquitous in competitive lists. I don't know if they might look at the actual boys datasheet and the pain boys with green tide if they are trying to compensate for battle line units being a bit more useful. I could easily see them attracting negative attention. At the other end of the spectrum though there's plenty of stuff that could use boost and the various flavours of buggies just cost too many points for what they do right now. I think if anything it would be nice to see the buggies be a little bit more shooty and effective as opposed to just lower points cost, but I think that's unlikely to happen given the codex has just dropped. Overall though, I wouldn't be too surprised to see orcs get some nerfs this time around. For the Necrons, they're on win rates around about 52%, still one of the most played armies in the game, though not quite so much as orcs. Prior to the last update, they were basically the unquestioned best army in Warhammer 40k, and as a result got a battery of nerfs, Technomancers, Catan, Immortals and a few others going up, though maybe not by quite as much as some people were expecting. A few things improved such as Scorpec Destroyers, Death Marks and a few other bits. At around a 52% win rate, it feels like they're strong but not really overpowered. I feel like they're not really too far behind all the leaders though. I wouldn't be too surprised if a few more staples take some small points hit, maybe Wraith and a few of the Catan could probably take a few more small rises. I guess it depends on what Games Workshop's feeling for them. I don't think they really need anything too drastic though, and there's still a lot of things at the other end of the spectrum for the army that seem obvious for some sort of buffs. Necron Warriors are still really badly balanced versus Immortals, the Triarch Praetorians and Triarch Stalker both do surprisingly little for their points cost, maybe Traz and the Infinite and the Obelisk could be other ones to look at. Finally, last but not least, we have the Tau. Again, they've had a pretty recent codex. I think it was quite a fun one with some cool rules. Literally all four of their detachments seem to have had at least some tournament success already. The Games Workshop increased some points costs when the codex dropped and also removed Tetras from the competitive game. And between that, it seems to have wound them up as a sort of mid-tierish army. Not one that's just destroying everyone, but takes a little bit of skill to play, though they have still been having a bit of competitive success, just far less so than people were expecting. Overall, they're broadly in the place where I feel like they could have a few buffs and not really have any nerfs. I think the iconic crisis suits would probably be my first place to look at. A few lists have been making them work, but not really all that many, which is kind of a shame given just how much some of the detachments and the enhancements are built around them. Even if it was some sort of small 5 or 10 point cut to a few of the units or commanders, that would probably be enough to get them a little bit more in contention. And if not, they could always adjust them further next time around. Broadsides also feel like they're in a bit of a poor place versus Hammerheads given the slightly outsized points nerf that they got last time round. And maybe for another couple of units that feel a bit overshadowed within the codex, maybe the Storm Surge and the Vespid Stingwings could get looked at. There aren't really too many lists using them versus their competitors. Overall it's certainly interesting to speculate as to what the armies might wind up getting in the update. I'm certainly looking forward to seeing what Games Workshop comes out with. Fingers crossed they have some fun stuff for a bunch of the factions. 40k does feel like it's in a bit of a weird mix at the moment. Lots of armies are in about as good a place as they've ever been in terms of making all of their units interesting and balanced. Though there's some that are just very far from that way. I feel like armies like Tyranids, Dark Angels, Death Watch and Abmech, maybe Chaos Knights, all of those could use some pretty serious attention. 
Let me know what changes you think about making and why down in the comments below. And feel free to subscribe to Auspets Tactics if you'd like to. I'll certainly cover any of the changes that Games Workshop makes in the balanced data slate when it comes out. Finally, if you've been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well. And that's the primary way that I can keep videos like this coming each and every day. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.